Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the array reduce method in JavaScript using three examples. Now, these examples are going to increase in difficulty as we go throughout today's video, but honestly, they really aren't too bad. And these are all things that I wish I knew when I first started learning JavaScript 10 years ago, because once I understood these concepts right here in today's video, the array reduce method really started to click. Now, before jumping into the code, I want to quickly explain what the purpose of the array reduce method is. So basically the array reduce method intends to take your array, okay, right here, and then reduce it down to a single value. So this is useful for things like finding the sum of numbers or taking a look at a data set and then finding, let's say the maximum value of that data set as an example. But there are many other things you can do with the array reduce method. It's a structure and then you can place whatever code you want inside of it. And that's basically it. So let's jump into the first example. All right, so jumping into the first example here of using array reduce, we're gonna be finding the total or the sum of all of these numbers right here inside of this array. So I checked earlier and the answer is gonna be 21. So hopefully we get 21. Now let's start by defining a new constant called sum equal to, and then go ahead and call the array reduce method. So we're going to be saying numbers dot reduce right here. And as we can see, we're calling this method on the existing numbers array. Now, this method is going to take through a couple of different things. The first thing is going to be a function of its own. So this function is going to run for every single item inside the array, or in this case, every single number. Okay. So we're going to be using an arrow function to define this here. So this is also going to be taking through here a couple of different things. I'm going to be focusing on the first two arguments here, the previous value and the current value. So I'm going to be uh, explaining these very shortly, but for now, let's just specify them. So we'll say P short for previous and C short for current. Okay. Let's finish off this function right here. And now right after the closing or the closing curly brace, let's put a comma and say zero. So zero here is going to be the initial value. So why have I chosen zero and what is the initial value? Well, basically, uh, this is going to be the starting value of the sum calculation. So because we want to go, we want to go from zero and then end up with 21 after looping through every single item. So this right here is basically just our starting point for the calculation. All right. Now, what is P and C? Okay, let's start with C. So like I mentioned earlier, this function is going to run. So this particular one inside the, uh, the reduce method itself. So this function here is going to run for every single item inside the array. So C is simply going to be the current item being looped over. So in this case here, in the first iteration, it's going to be three, then it's going to be six, two, nine, and finally one. So we're going to see five different function calls here. So five different iterations and five different uh, versions of C. Okay. P is the previous value from the last function call. All right. So this just means if I return from this function here, P plus C, whatever this return value is, that is going to be what P is going to be in the next iteration of this loop here. Okay. So it's sort of like it's all chained together. Okay. So what does this mean? When we call array reduce, just like this, the first iteration, okay, C is going to be equal to three. All right. What's P going to be equal to? Well, P is going to be equal to zero. So zero is considered in the first iteration and that's it. It's the initial value. It's something to get us started, right? So zero plus three is equal to three. Okay. And that's the return value from the function, which means in the next iteration, P is now going to be equal to three. Then it's going to say three plus C or six. That's going to be nine. All right. The next iteration, it's going to be nine as P 
and two as C, so nine plus two, 11, and so on. So that is what we're doing with the array reduce, and it really is that simple. Everything else inside here, it's up to you guys, okay? So let's now say console.log and log out the value of sum. If I run this here, we get 21, all right? So it's perfect, it's working, it's working nicely. Now, just to further demonstrate this point of P and C, I wanna say console.log, for every iteration here, I'm gonna say the previous value just to log out and see as we progress what the values are gonna be equal to. Let's say previous and current. Let's run the code again. And we can see here we get previous zero and current three. Okay, so zero and then three. Then we get three and six. Then we get nine and two and then so on. So we can see there how that runs and at the end here, we get 20, then we get one, 20 plus one is 21, and that's how we get 21. So that right there is probably one of the most simple examples of using array reduce to give you a result. This next example is gonna be a lot different and a bit more exciting, all right? So this one here, we can see we have this array of people. So we have a name and we have the age of every single person. So we're gonna be using array reduce to give us the oldest age inside this list of people. Now, of course, we can see here it's gonna be 47, but imagine an array of 100 people, you can't easily find that. So we're gonna be using array reduce to find the oldest age out of all these people here. So let's just minimize the people array right here. We can see obviously it's an object, name and age, so that's all we need to know. So let's minimize that, okay? Then hop down here and we're gonna say const oldest age equal to, and then once again, calling people dot reduce. Now here, just like the previous example, we're gonna be uh, taking through the previous value and the, uh, and the current value. So we can say here P and we can say C, okay? Now, with this time, okay, or this time, we're also gonna be using zero as the initial value. That's perfectly fine because if there was, for example, no one in the array, then the oldest age is gonna be zero, okay? So this time is a little bit different because instead of looping over numbers, we're looping over objects, all right? This is perfectly fine because all it means is P is now gonna be, I'm um, sorry, C is now gonna be an object. And we can see here with VS Code, you get the um, you get the actual declarations and the type. So you can see here, we got a name and an age property, which of course comes from the people array. So inside here, we're gonna do a simple check. We're gonna say, look, is, okay, is C.age greater than the current uh, or the previous max age? So in this case, P, if it is, we'll say, okay, let's return c.age, okay? Otherwise, we can return the current value of p or the previous value of p. So p is gonna hold the current max age, all right? So looping over the array here, we have 35 as the first iteration. Okay, is 35 more than zero? Yes, then let's make the max age 35, okay? Next iteration, 47. Is 47 more than 35? Yes, then return 47 as the max age. Next one, is 27 more than 47? No, okay, cool. Let's return the previous value of 47. So now if I was to console.log the oldest age, save this and run it, we can see here we indeed get 47. So that right there is some custom logic we've placed inside array reduce, very similar to the last one, except this time we're sort of filtering out and trying to find a value out of all of them as opposed to doing a sum and then and then so on. So that right there is your second example. All right, guys, the last example here is gonna use the exact same people array from earlier, but this time we're gonna be finding, uh, or essentially we're gonna be creating a list of the initials for every single person inside the array here. So we expect the results of the reduce method to be uh, the initials DP, then a comma, a W, then a comma, B W, then a full stop. So basically we want to see this, right? Uh, D P, A W, B W, and then full stop. So I'll make these capitals, right? 
So we want this result out of the array reduce, okay? So, um, you know, I think using array reduce for something like this is appropriate. Um, you know, this is sort of, I guess, uh, uh, it's opposed to having a whole function which takes in an array and then sort of does some magic with some variables to find it. With array reduce, it's a single, uh, single sort of call and it compacts everything together to give you that result. So, how do we do this? Well, we can drop down here and we're going to say const. Uh, let's just call this one output, okay? Output is going to be equal to people.reduce once again, but this time we're going to be taking advantage of all four parameters that we can provide to the first function here. So once again, we have the previous value, we have the current value, then we have the index. So we have, we have access to the current index of the array. Okay, so that's that one. The last uh, parameter here is going to be the array itself. Let's just call this one A. So A is the exact same thing as people. Okay, sometimes you don't have access to the array you're working on, depending on the scenario. So that's why you have access to the array directly inside here. So we're going to be using that array and not the above array, but more on that later. Now, let's just hop down here once again. And because this time we're going to be building a string, let's provide an empty string as the initial value, just like that. All right. So just to recap, I is the current index, so 0, 1, and 2. And A is the, it's simply just a reference to the array we're working on. In this case here, people. All right. So dropping down here, how do we work with this? The first thing to do is going to be to split up each each name and grab the uh, first initial and the last initial. So down here, we're going to say const split equal to then simply split up the name. So we'll say C dot name dot split. Then we're going to be splitting here by an empty array. So now we have, so my mistake, an empty string. So now we have split. It's going to be an array of Dom and then Perry. Okay. Now, we have that array to get the initials. It's going to simply be the first character of the first array and the first character of the last array. So my, my, my first name and the last name. So with this one here, we're going to say let part equal to now part is simply just uh, a way for me to name a string, which is going to be worked on as we go through the function here. So part equal to then using the back ticks here on your keyboard to allow us to do dollar signs and curly braces, we can now pass through here the first initial. So we're going to say split here at index zero for my first name of Dom. So this one right here. So then we're going to say essentially just another, uh, you know, square bracket. And we're just going to say here zero. So the first character. Okay. So split zero, zero. That right there gives me D. Let's just copy this once again and do the same thing here. This time, index one of the split is going to be the last name of Perry. So now index zero of that is going to be P, which is what we're doing here. And now we have DP. That right there is the first part of our, uh, of our string here. So I want to stop right here. I want to console.log the part, okay? Then I want to simply return, let's just return uh, my name of Dom. Okay, so this right, I guess this right here is going to not, not, uh, not do much. So that's fine. Let's just run this code here and we get DP, AW and BW. So we have all of those initials printed out here using this logic. So now we're going to check if the current value is the last item in the array. If so, we're going to add a full stop. Otherwise, we're going to add a comma to continue the list. So here we're going to say, okay, cool. If, all right, we're going to say if the current index, okay, is equal to the array length minus one, all right, then we're at the last value. So we're going to say here, part plus equals, and then just say dot to add a full stop. Otherwise, if we're not on the last item in the array, we can say part plus equals, and this time we're going to say comma and simply put a space. So now we're done. We can simply return the part just like that. Okay. Let's save this, run the code and let's log out the result real quick. We can log out the output here just like that and run the code again. 
and we get BW only. Let's try and figure out why here. What did I, oh, of course, okay. I forgot to do P plus the part because of course P is the return value from the previous function. So we need to, of course, append that on. Let's try again and run it and we get DP, AW, and then of course BW and a full stop. So that right there is your last example for the array reduce method. And that is all for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And just quickly before I go, I'm now creating courses on Udemy. So if you're interested in some of my uh, web development or JavaScript courses, the link is gonna be down below. And I'll see you in the next video.